what are the most common mistakes made when learning the air flight? <laughs> What's up guys, this is your man Coach Sambo right here and in this video I will be helping you guys out learning your air flare faster by avoiding a lot of these mistakes that are made when learning an air flare. So after teaching air flares to generations of kids, I managed to actually make a list right here of things that actually are very very common when learning an air flare. Also I do get tons of questions of people sending me videos asking me what's wrong with their air flare and I see a lot of the same mistakes repeat themselves and that's why we're going to be talking about this in this video. And after years of experience helping people out with their air flares, I will also provide you with the answers and methods on how to avoid these mistakes so you don't have to experience them and that's probably going to speed up the process of you learning your air flare. So if you're new on this channel right here, I just want to introduce myself really quick. My name is B-Boy Sambo or Coach Sambo and I'm the founder of Team Schmetta but also the Battle Droids crew. And the Battle Droids crew is known for the moment for having tons of kids, B-girls and adults doing air flares. Definitely check them out on Instagram because you know the new generation is killing it obviously also I just want to say that I have tons of tutorials online including a very very detailed air flare tutorial and following up on a lot of those steps that I share in my air flare tutorial you will already avoid a lot of mistakes that we're gonna go through at this moment now the thing is when I'm gonna go through all of these mistakes with you guys it's really important that you really listen and actually apply the things I'm gonna talk about because you know b-boys man ah oh, man I'm gonna just do my well, you can do your own thing, but trust me, after teaching a lot of kids after 15 years, you might want to save yourself some time and especially injuries. So let's just dive straight into the list right here. And we're going to start out with the first thing I've actually written down. It's lack of shoulder or hip flexibility. Now you don't need to be really, really flexible to be able to do an air flare. And to be honest with you guys, I have seen a lot of people out there with close to zero flexibility still managing to do the air flare. But a good flexibility in your shoulder and in your hips will definitely help you speed up the process and above that it will definitely improve your form making your air flares look more beautiful and let me just add right here now that we're talking about flexibility that you don't want to stretch during or before your practice you should only stretch at the end of your practice sessions and when I was young back in the day and still going to school the physical education teachers actually taught me to stretch before every practice. But let me tell you, that information was completely wrong. Like really, really wrong. And stretching before a practice session actually created more risk of me injuring myself, especially when training flares, air flares, and you know, like power moves. So practice whatever you have to practice, but just make sure that you stretch at the end of your practice. And don't just take three minutes to stretch. Take a decent 20 minutes at least to stretch out every muscle in your body not just to improve flexibility, but also to make sure that you don't have any pain the next day so you can train again. Also, a lot of people want to learn air flare before they actually master decent flares or even a decent handstand. So I just want to add here that having a good control over your flares, windmills, and especially handstand and spinning handstand, these are just things you do not want to skip if you really want to learn a good air flare. I have tutorials for all these moves, so definitely check these out if that's what you need. So moving on to another very common mistake when training your air flare is people just throwing themselves and not actually actually landing in a stable way. And take a look at this video. This was me way back in the day, training or trying to do an air flare. This is something I still see a lot these days when people send me videos. As you can see, you throw yourself with the intention and the hope of doing an air flare, but there's no stable landing and there's no way you're gonna do two, or there's no way you're actually gonna combine it to a windmill or to a flare or whatever. And let me just say that training your air flare this way is actually possible, but it is time consuming. People training their air flares this way might learn it, but it will take like five or six years. That's why the technique I explain in my air flare tutorial is revolutionary. When looking at my air flare tutorial, I will guide you through the process of walking over your air flare. This technique is actually the key to install a good landing. Because your body is not used to throwing itself in air flares yet, you have to slowly guide your body and show your body where you're actually going to when jumping from one hand to the other. Practicing your air flares in the walkover method will make your body adapt a lot faster to the position that is needed if you want to be able to perform multiple air flares. So if your air flare still looks like this, then you should definitely check out my air flare tutorial that you can find in the description down below. So moving on to another very common mistake that I see a lot when people send me videos 
is people learning it so high that it kind of looks like a hopping slash spinning handstand kind of move. This is sometimes because a little lack of shoulder flexibility, but usually there's another problem that I do not explain in my air flare tutorial. And this problem is that after landing your air flare, which is on your third hand, as explained in my tutorial, people are placing their fourth hand way too fast, not giving your body the possibility to create the air flare angle. So what you wanna do to avoid this is give yourself a little bit of time and space before placing your fourth hand on the floor. This will create a lower angle, making your high air flare look a lot more like a real air flare. So make sure you film yourself while practicing and really study your body while performing the air flare. Next up is another very common mistake is people doing two, three, even sometimes four air flares, but have the problem of the legs being all crippled and the feeling that they're not performing air flares the way they actually want to perform air flares. But let me just say that this is completely normal. When you've just learned your air flare and you're still in the process of learning 10, there's a really big chance that your air flares might look kind of weird. But as soon as you master 10, 15 or 20 air flares, you're gonna see your form improve a lot more. Also just adding the fact that when you can do 10 or 15 air flares, that you start to be a lot more conscious while doing the move. So you can actually start to decide if you wanna stretch your legs more or not. Because when you're stuck with two or three air flares, you just don't have the time to think about your legs. The only thing you're thinking about at that point is not crashing. So give yourself some time and some space to actually just work on numbers first and the form will actually follow. And for that, I just have to add that your patience will be rewarded which basically already is a very common mistake with a lot of b-boys because a lot of b-boys don't have any patience. So that's why I'm here making this video telling you you're probably on the right track, but you just need time to adapt. Another common problem with people performing two, three, four air flares is your hand that is kind of twisted every time you land your air flare. And this creates discomfort and kind of a distraction when performing your air flare. But this is also a very common thing while still in the process of learning multiple air flares. Also, a lot of my students have the same problem, but when time passes and you keep training the move consistently, this is definitely something that improves with time, especially when you get more comfortable when performing the air flare. Moving on to another very common mistake is people performing air flare in a straight line and not in the circle as you normally would do when doing a normal air flare. This usually occurs when people train the air flare too high, but is usually caused by people not rotating their hand to the inside when performing their power kick to enter the air flare. And this should definitely help you a lot with not performing your air flares in a straight line. Also, another thing I wanna add really quick right here is when you're training your air flare, especially in the high method, that you really wanna take your time and execute the move slowly. The slower you execute your air flare or your walkover air flare, the faster you will be able to understand and master that air flare. And also by practicing your air flare this way, Way. you're giving yourself more time to perfection that form. People that just rush the process and just throw themselves high or low usually have legs that are whipping in every kind of direction and have no control over the move. And this is gonna end up in time being lost. So take your time and practice everything slow. So this was a really quick run through through a lot of common mistakes that are being made at the moment. Just don't forget to watch my airflow tutorial again and really pay attention to the details because I addressed most of these issues in the video. Besides my air flare tutorial, you will find tons of other power move tutorials, including my very recent musicality tutorial. Definitely don't miss out on that. Especially if you're training air flares, I do recommend you working on your musicality because b-boying is not just power move, guys. But I'm sure you already knew that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right there and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos that I will be uploading. I wish you a lot of luck with your air flares and if you wanna send me some videos to get some feedback, then just send me those videos to my Instagram and I'll just do my best to give you the best feedback I can because that's what I do. I'm your online b-boy coach. Take care, peace, and at the end of the day, when you think about it, it's just all about that b-boy shit.